Hey you guys, Guy Stevens here. Someone uh, asked me to explain to them the month name function and I've made a tiny little example file where I've got, um, let's have a look at file manage database. Very simple, uh, one little table. Let's say that the table holds transactions and I've got a couple of fields. I've got an ID field, which is an auto enter serial, which I always have. There's a date of the transaction. There could be remarks. And of course there should be a lot of other information, but I don't need anything else for this exercise. Now, um, if I'm gonna have a transaction, that transaction is gonna happen on a certain date. And if I wanna enter a date, I might want to have this be as a drop down calendar and that has an icon to show and hide the calendar. Okay, so that way I can very easily select a date. Now, um, if I want to kind of know in which month this is, I can of course see that here, but if I would like to have that in a separate field, I can use the month name function. I can go to file, manage database, I can make a simple new field, and I could call that field month name name. Now you can make a calculation that calculates the month name but ideally in this situation um, you're only going to set that date once and that date's going to stay that way so what you can do is just store the month name as a symbol text that way it doesn't always have to be recalculated that way your solution is faster and you can also have a text that has uh, in its setup here in a calculated value that gets entered there and that calculated value will be entered as soon as one of the fields that are a part of this calculation are going to be modified so as soon as you modify the date this one will be modified as well so very simple I can just use the month name function I can do that by either typing month name and then I get an F, uh, whoops, month name. I get a little uh, pop-up that says uh, month name and it returns the full name of the month for a date. So that sounds very interesting. That sounds just like what I need. So a month name, uh, the, the formula kind of goes like this. You have month name and then you have a date that you have to choose. And of course my date is in here. So I'm gonna double click this one and that um, I uh, have my function. If you don't wanna type it in here, you can search it in here, month name, and then you will find it as well. And then you can double click it and it'll pop in here like so. So, and then it shows up and then it's exactly the same. Okay, but I would only need one, cool. Uh, this is going to result in a text obviously because you're going to get a month name uh, so that's good and then here you have a choice where you can uh, not replace the existing value of, of the field if there is a value in there so what that means is as soon as you set a date the month name field is going to calculate which uh, month name that is it's going to enter that in there but then if you go in there and change the date this will not update as long as this uh, field is checked. Now most of the time I do not want that to be the case so I'm going to uncheck this one and that means that every time I change the date this month name uh, calculation is going to update which is kind of what I want because that way my month name always stays correct even if I've changed the date. Okay and the cool thing about that is you don't have a calculation field right now you don't need to constantly calculate this value it'll just be set when you set the date and then it'll stay in there like a text field and you can do everything with it that you could do with another simple text field. Um, it won't slow your calculation down you can use this in um, in like relationships you can use this for finds and for sorting and it'll all happen a lot quicker than if it is a calculation that constantly needs to be recalculated okay so let's try this out let's add this field so let's edit my layout let's drag this field on my layout here and let's add the month name and then I can see what uh, that uh, field does now of course now there is nothing in there because I had already filled in the date and so this only updates once that field updates so let's try and put in a different date and then in this month name field the month of February shows up so that's kind of cool um, let's try to see uh, if we can look at this in another way let's go to file oh no let's do just to edit layout let's make a new layout and let's make a list of transactions to see if we can learn a little bit more from this. So let's do computer, let's do lists. Okay, I'm finished. And now let's add a couple of fields here. So I'm gonna go into the body here and I'm gonna add a, uh, let's say the ID field, let's say that can stay. Now the um, label shows up here. I don't want that, so I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna take my text and I'm gonna put it up here. ID, okay, cool. So I've got my ID field, I've got my, this one can be a bit more narrow like so. Okay, cool, now I can start to use my Alt to drag and copy. 
these fields and then I can just modify them and I could say date okay I want a date here I'm gonna modify this label I'm gonna make this a little bit wider and again I'm gonna um, well, first copy it maybe and then I can adjust this one to become a drop-down calendar and include a icon an icon and then I'm gonna say yeah remarks sure why not um, remarks not that I'm really using that one right now but that way it's in there and then I'm gonna copy this one again and then I will uh, say that I would like to have for this one the month name okay this doesn't have to be that long there's not a month name that is that long okay if I now go into browse mode I can see that I've got uh, this one and I can just go and add other ones let's say that I want to add and actually don't like this setup so I'm gonna go into edit layout I hit this pen button here which is the layout setup and I'm gonna say I do not want to delineate fields on current record only because I think that's kind of annoying and there you go now I have all my fields kind of visible okay so now I've got a bunch of February fields and if I add one that is maybe in the previous month then look it says January pretty cool and I can just add whatever I want now if I want what I can do is I can do sorting and so I could um, maybe sort all these fields by month which would be kind of cool I can sort by month name there you go so now they are kind of grouped by month but as you can already see um, just because they're grouped by month um, they're all still in a very kind of uh, list that's kind of the same so it's not so easy to see where the one ends and the other begins and also the sorting is wrong so there are, I've got two problems right there so first of all I would like to kind of group them a little bit more um, and maybe I can um, well you know what I'll start with the sorting because it starts with February the F then January and then March of course that's not the order of the months but that is because I'm sorting by month name so I'm sorting alphabetically but these months of course alphabetically that's not um, how they're gonna be sorted correctly so what I need to have right now in order to sort them I need to have not their month name but I need their month number so let's go to file manage database and instead of month name I'm gonna add the month number and that's gonna be not a text but that's gonna be a number so let's create that one and then let's see if I have any other options to enter a calculation so let's just type in month here to kind of see what options that I have this one is month returns a number from 1 to 12 representing the month of the year in which a date occurs okay that's kind of interesting I also have name here but I've already used that and this one returns the name of the month in Japanese yeah I don't really want that so this one sounds pretty good so I'm gonna double click that the date of course has to be my date field and that is gonna be okay I'm gonna uncheck this one again so that if I so that if I change the date um, my uh, calculation is updated okay cool this is kind of awesome let's edit my layout so that I can add that field to my layout and so that I can kind of see what's going on I'm gonna double click this one and say month number I'm gonna edit the label and then let's have a look and what do I see there is nothing in there of course the reason that there's nothing in there is because I've only created this field afterwards when I already had a bunch of records now if I would update this one this would update as well and would get filled in but I don't really feel like updating all of these records especially not if I have hundreds of records already created so what I can do is I can change the content of this field for all records all at the same time and I can do that by going to records and using replace field contents or on your Mac it's uh, command uh, is equal and if I do that I get a new uh, dialogue here and I can replace this with a calculation which is kind of what I'm doing originally anyway and that calculation was month and then my date so if I do that what's gonna happen is FileMaker is gonna replace the value in every single field in this field for every single record with that calculation and now as you can see February is 2 uh, January is month 1 and March is month 3 so that's all correct now if I do my sort not on the month name but on the month number then we can see that 1 2 3 these are all showing up correctly these are sorted correctly so 
you do need both of these calculations in order to be able to first of all display the month name but then to sort by the month number okay so now how can we take this one step further because yes they are sorted now but it still doesn't look that um, it's not such a good overview we can take this a step further by kind of grouping them together a little bit more so let's go into edit layout let's go to layouts part setup and let's say I would like to create a new part and this new part is gonna be a sub summary when sorted by and uh, it's gonna sort by the month number, obviously, because that's um, the only way to sort them correctly. So I'm gonna hit OK, and I would like to print this part above. You could also print it below, but if I put it above, then I get the month name first, and then I get the months that are in that, uh, or the records that are in that month. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a text field right here, and I'm going to insert a merge field, and that merge field is gonna be not my month number, but my month name because that's the one I use for display and the number is the one I use for sorting so you can sort on the number field but display the uh, text field or the month name field so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe make this a little bit bigger here let's make this a 14 bold yeah maybe I can even give this part a, a different kind of fill color let's go for a pink pink is always cool all right Okay, so now if I exit my layout, what I can see is it automatically shows up correctly because I was already sorting by um, the month number. But if I would sort, for instance, by month name, then nothing would show up because the important thing about a sub summary um, field, and you can kind of see that here when you go to part setup, it says that this is a, whoops, if you create one, it says it's sub summary when sorted by that field. So you always, the sub summary part is always uh, dependent on the sort that you have going on. So if I sort by month number, then the part shows up. If I don't sort, like if I unsort, then that part uh, goes away. So a sub summary part is always dependent on the sort order. So let's sort by month number. And then you can see January. And these are all the transactions from January, February, and March, and so forth. So now basically you don't need these fields in here anymore because, well, there it's kind of obvious which month this is. So I can kind of get rid of these two. And that way you can get your transactions uh, sorted per um, month. Now, if you would like to know exactly how many transactions you have had per month, what you could do is just manage database and just add a little field, which is like a summary count ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a summary field. And that summary field is going to count the ID field. It's counting the ID field because the ID field is always going to have a value in it. Because if you're going to count like a field, like the remarks field that might not have a value in it, then that's not going to count. So we're always going to count the ID field because then you know your count is correct. And because that is a summary field, what we can do is we can place it in the sub summary part. And then we can just simply say amount. And then let's have a look. It says two, which is correct. This one says three, which is correct. And this one says two, which is correct. So this summary field is also, again, dependent on the sort. And if you put it in a sub summary field, it's going to count the amount of records that are in that kind of sorted group. So this way you can kind of use um, kind of subtotals or counts if you want. Um, uh, in these sub summary parts. So if we would go and add maybe a amount field, let's say that that's going to be a number and we create that one, then what we can also do, well, let's, let's do this one step at a time. Let's first add the amount field here in the body. Uh, let's not create a label and actually let's put this, let's not, let's call this count. And let's put this a bit further, otherwise it's gonna get a little messy. Amount, because remember these were transactions, so what if we just put a little amount in here? Uh, two, two, okay, eight, and two. 
Okay, so what we can do now in File Manage Database, we have our amount. We can also create a summary total amount, which could be a summary field. And then we, we, when we create that, we can say, give me the total of the amount. And this can then also be, uh, because it's a summary field, this can also be totaled per uh, month. So again, we've got uh, this one, but we also can like copy this one over here. And we could say amount. And then this one has to show the S total amount. And then we'll just maybe make it bold so that it stands out a bit. And we could give these two like a little bit of a currency display red when it's negative. It's a euro symbol, which is fine. Okay, cool. So, okay, maybe, oh no, that's actually correct. Um, so now what we've got is we've got in January 10 plus 15 equals 25 and then uh, 5 plus 2 plus 2 equals 9 and so all of your months are now counted and added up together to again give you a total per month. So 8 plus 2 is 10 for March. Um, okay, so I think that's a little um, a handy way and that's how I always use the month name function. But uh, always, always remember that if you're going to sort the month, you also you also need the month number, and then you can use sub summary parts and everything to group your data to create summaries and so forth and so forth. So uh, yeah, very handy functions, uh, very nice things to use in in lists and in reporting. All right, I hope you guys learned something new. Bye bye. If you guys want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can head over to my Udemy page where I've got a bunch of entire FileMaker courses online. You can follow them and basically we make entire FileMaker systems from scratch and I'll take you uh, on the entire process step by step. There is even one that is uh, completely free, so you can just follow that free of charge and that is a beginner tutorial where we make an entire contacts database. Um, that's a really fun one that you can follow that can teach you the basics of FileMaker. So head over there by following the links in the description and I'll see you guys there.